I'll kick us off and and then I'll hand it off to you. So uh, welcome everybody. This is um, not the normal TOC call, technical oversight committee call for Hyperledger. This is the, the call that is focused on the task force. Um, so specifically the badging and project lifecycle task force. Uh, but two things that we have to be aware of. The first is the antitrust policy that is currently displayed on the screen. Um, so obviously there's uh, competitors on the call, make sure that we're not doing anything that will uh, violate any of the antitrust policy laws across the world. And then secondly, uh, our code of conduct, which is linked there uh, in our typical agendas, but uh, not an agenda for today. So, but um, just basically be respectful to everybody on the call and their opinions, their ideas, and uh, we'll get along just fine. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Ramo so that he can take us through the badging and project life cycle task force. So this is a working call. Um, Rama, off to you. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, yeah, I just, and thanks for going over the policy. I just flashed uh, uh, this, one of the Cacti maintenance agenda page because I didn't have a, a new page for containing the policy notice. Um, let me get the tab. Okay, so uh, I'll go over the wiki page that uh, I created a while ago. And I think the last time we got to talking about this, which was the first time we uh, discussed the badging lifecycle task force uh, on, a, on a TOC call was, uh, I think I got about uh, five to 10 minutes and I just did a brief overview. So maybe we can go into this in a bit more uh, detail and uh, uh, then uh, like to drive discussion and uh, get people's suggestions, recommendations, uh, and then we can suitably edit this page and make uh, uh, the recommendations more concrete. So uh, this is, uh, so what we had, Earlier, at least in, uh, in Tracy's description, was a bunch of links that were uh, uh, that that uh, a bunch of links for earlier discussions around this topic. So this is not, uh, strictly speaking, an original uh, uh, task force uh, uh, action item. Uh, but this has been this was discussed, uh, I think, two or three years ago, and uh, so I looked at that discussion and. Uh, uh, some of the, and I summarize some of the discussion that, uh, that took place at the time. So we need to take that into account. And, uh, uh also we need to look at the, uh, different project life cycles that we have as references. Of course, our Hyperledger project life cycle, and also the, uh, Linux foundation, Linux, uh, uh, foundation networking project life cycle. So, uh, the goals can be summarized in, in this uh, this way. How do we accurately and comprehensively represent the state, stages of a Hyperledger project's life cycle in order to make accurate assessments about a project's health and make appropriate decisions on its future trajectory? So that's where uh, we have to we have to figure out uh, what uh, what is a necessary and sufficient uh, uh, set of uh, project stages, as well as uh, some kind of labels that indicate what how a project is currently doing and where it is headed, and how the TOC can govern the project uh, in a manner that uh, is uh, um, that is fair to that that particular project. Um, so broadly, it looks like we can take two approaches: um, either we augment the current project lifecycle with a set of review labels, each associated with a uh, review criteria and uh, rename or split or merge states as appropriate so that the process and criteria for each state transition is clear and uh, unambiguous. Or we can use a badging system whereby each project will be issued a badge uh, that attests to a set of attributes or criteria that the project uh, is deemed to have met. So um, each stage in the project can then be represented by a set of badges. So uh, we, we don't, uh, with badges, we don't get rid of a project life cycle. I think project life cycle has, to, we have to have a project life cycle that indicates uh, what the current stage of the project is and uh, 
uh, whether or not it's heading in the right direction. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the the but with badges, uh, uh, we can have a state transition diagram where the each state tra transition criteria will clearly state what badges are needed for a project to go from one stage to another. For example, if you go want a project to go from incubation to graduated, which is I, I would think the most uh, uh, important transition the project will be uh, making, then we can identify a list of badges that the project will have to acquire while in its incubation stage before it can be considered for uh, graduation. So uh, is this uh, is this uh, clear enough? Do, do people think they need anything more uh, for the task force or uh, yeah, any comments? Peter? I think this looks great as it is. No, no further comments. Okay. Uh, Bobby? Hi, um, thank you for acknowledging uh, my hand. Uh, I think this is great. We're working on the task force for the documentation um, task force on something similar to this, um, just to have user guides. Um, and we had um, Alfonso uh, from the mentorship program talk about learning tokens. Um, and I was curious as if maybe we can tokenize the badging system so that when you reach so many, so much criteria, you have like five tokens. And then I'm not gonna say this correctly, but you can burn that for the graduation token badge that gets on your project page. And then when you, you know, reach a certain, uh, point where you want to go to graduated, you've earned so many more tokens by meeting so much criteria that you get the graduated badge token. And then that comes with a smart contract that needs to be updated. So it's like got a timer on it so that when your documentation or your project has many amendments to it, you have a certain time period in which that badge expires for you to update. Like, is that the kind of idea when you say badging that you're talking about? Um, or is it more of a static bed where you get it and then it's done? Uh, so this is something we should uh, we, we we can discuss further. I think what you've just articulated can be uh, uh, a particular can be a badging criteria. I think the discussion that happened uh, uh, within the Hyperigia TSC a couple of years ago involved uh, something uh, somewhat more static. It, it was, uh, this is a recap of the, that early discussion. Uh, what the TSC was thinking about at the time was that uh, uh, there would be a certain set of, uh, uh, that if, a, if a project met a certain uh, criteria, then it would, it would, it would automatically self-certify itself for a particular badge. For example, legal refers to if the project is, uh, if the project repository, uh, if the code in the project repository is all uh, clearly licensed uh, and there are no gaps, then I think it, uh, the project can self-certify itself with a legal bat that is being legally uh, compliant. Uh, if it is uh, decentralized, it refers to whether or not the project has enough diversity of uh, maintainers and and so on. So testing refers to whether it's been uh, it has an adequate uh, test coverage, whatever adequate may mean, and documentation uh, whether or not it it uh, the documentation is comprehensive. Again, the uh, that discussion did not go into how the assessment for these would be made. Uh, the uh, the in, in that uh, if we go through the conversation there, people are talking about. Uh, self-certification and uh, some people had concerns about whether or not a project could be trusted to self-certify itself uh, but then um, if a project cannot self-certify itself then uh, it will be up to the TOC to constantly be reviewing uh, or, or either issuing badges uh, upon request by uh, project's maintainers or if project uh, uh, demands a particular badge, then the uh, the TOC will have to review it. Uh, but I think if uh, your proposal or, or your suggestion, I think uh, may streamline this. If we can uh, figure out exactly uh, some sort of automated way by which um, a project uh, uh, can accumulate tokens. So I would like to understand that a bit more before we can uh, figure out how that can be used to create these badges. So just to be clear, the 
the notion of badging projects was uh, not uh, i think agreed upon during during this particular uh, this round of discussion and it was uh, discussion happened but then it was benched and then uh, we have since been following the the project life cycle but uh, but yeah so uh, how can you say more about how uh, bobby i mean can you say more about how you think uh, the token system can happen uh, sure. can can um, be effective i yeah. you know, i envision uh, the hyperledger community actually engaging in tokenomics so to speak so that every project as soon as it um, became you know a github lab would um, i guess have its own da uh, project dashboard and um, have the dashboards set up so that when you are compliant with security issues, you would put a check there and then the system, the dashboard would issue that, I'm going to call it an NFT token for security. Then you finish your um, testing, you check that off and then you get the you know token for testing. And then when you have, I'm looking at the categories, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like say 10 categories in order to get um, into the labs that you have to have done. Um, and once you check all those off on your dashboard, um, it will automatically issue the badge to your wiki page or home page of your project on the website, wherever that lives, um, that you've got that badge and that would uh, maybe initiate a uh, call to the TOC that you're doing this or initiate the next steps to move into labs. And then once you're into labs, the same dashboard would have a different checklist of things that you needed to accomplish and get tokens for before you would get kicked over to that conversation of moving into graduated. And if you had all your tokens and you went to the TOC and it got or it, and it got approved, you would get that badge, you'd be a graduated project. And then I guess we're doing the yearly um, checkups at the beginning of the year, but maybe there'd be something in that smart contract that said after a year, you need to revisit your security, your legal, your releases, your testing. And then you do that and then your dashboard gets that update badge or you know year two badge or whatever. So that as soon as you look into a wiki page or a homepage for that project, depending on what badge is there, you know exactly where they are in the life cycle. That was kind of my idea. Thank you. Uh, Tracy, I think you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, um, so I like the idea of uh, having to look at the status on a regular basis, whatever that basis is, whether it's a year or six months or, or whatever that time frame is, right? Um, I, I really like this idea of having to kind of recertify to ensure that you are at a particular stage um, in the, the life cycle. I um, I think if we go with some sort of mechanism to issue badges, it should probably be a verifiable credential, but that's just my opinion because they are not transferable. Um, and then we could also revoke them or expire them um, to allow for kind of that recertification aspect of things. So um, I don't know if that's, I, I know why you're suggesting it, Bobby. I'm just not sure if it's, uh, if it's more than we want um, for for the perspective of this task force. Obviously there's gonna be some work that's involved there. There's going to have to be a, um, you know, some blockchain service that's running that we could be able to utilize. And um, there's cost involved there, obviously. And so I, I, um, I think we just need to think about the consequences of, of doing that. I. I think it's a great idea from the perspective of Hyperledger and, and blockchains in general, and uh, you know, using the tools that we have written um, within the, the project or the foundation. Um, but yeah, just let's consider everything that's going to need to be done if we do go down that path of um, you know running a blockchain and having an issuing application and a you know a wallet and, and all of those sorts of things that would be required. Uh, from that perspective. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Bobby, you have anything else on that? Before we move on? 
No, I think that's all. Um, I'd love for you to join our Monday meetings um, just to see where we're at. Um, it's on the public calendar, nine o'clock uh, Eastern time, uh, Mondays. Sure, I'll, I'll do that. Thanks. Arun? Thanks, Rama. And then uh, this was a good discussion. Um, based on this discussion, I have a mix of multiple uh, statements or probably comments to be made. <laughs> Um, I like really like the idea of having a dashboard which kind of shows us the progress of a project and how well the project has been doing um, 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 over a period um, across multiple aspects that we identify that is required. Um, I really like that idea. So um, if we want to achieve it via blockchain or just through some means of dashboarding, it's on us. Um, let's see if that's uh, possible to do. Continuing on this discussion, I believe when we start looking into what should we uh, label in those dashboards and what should we indicate in those dashboards, I guess it goes back to some of the metrics that we want to consider across projects. And um, and this is the mixed set of opinions that I had, right? So going back to what are those metrics that we want to track, I guess it takes us back to the existing portal that we have through LFX to look into what, dash, what additional dashboarding capabilities do we need using those metrics. I think um, I, th I think all of this connects to the uh, similar opinion of having a unified uh, ex portal or an experience dashboard where we can see what's happening across a project. And uh, probably now we should start looking into how should we achieve it um, also as part of this task force, if possible. Thanks. So just to be clear, so we want one dashboard for all the projects, or we do we want one dashboard per project? Open to even having those um, metrics details mentioned under the readme of each repository, or if, if that's confusing for some of the projects because they have multiple repositories, then a dashboard where somebody can see those statuses. It could also be through our um, annual report cycle or maybe quarterly report cycle pages where they mention about uh, these, where we mention about how the project did in that quarter. Right. I mean, I was, uh, I wanted to bring up the question of, uh, or rather link this uh, process to the annual review process that we've already been discussing. Tracy? Sorry, trying to get myself off mute. Um, so I remember, I think it was the last time we kind of quickly touched on this particular task force. There was a website, uh, and I think it was for Silencia, but it could have been for something else, um, that basically showed uh, for all of the projects kind of a, a one page website that had kind of red, green sort of responses. Um, and I'll see if I can find that in our Discord chat from previously. But I, I think that, you know, if we're talking about a dashboard, it does make sense to have a combined one so that everybody can see kind of the status of the Hyperledger Foundation projects. Um, but I think it also does make sense to, to have the ability for people, um, people, for projects to be able to display, you know, either on their GitHub readme or or someplace on the wiki for their project, or I don't know, somewhere, right? Uh, maybe multiple places, a page that basically says, "Here's here's my badges, right? Here's the project badges that we've achieved. Um, here's what we're working towards, right? Here's the the things that are grayed out, if you will, because they haven't been achieved yet, but." Uh, I do think that being able to see both options is, is a good thing. Um, so okay. let me let me see if I can find that um, that last one that we went through and uh, and put it out in the chat, the TOC chat. So sure, thanks. That that would be great. So uh, each project then could have a page called something like badges.md or uh, lifecycle.md. Would would something like that work? 
Yeah, some, something, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like, it could be generated, right? Um, so that we're, we're not having the projects have to generate that, but something that could be easily displayed um, from, you know, the GitHub repo or from the wiki or something like that. Um, so that if, if I wanted to go find out what the status of cacti was, I could go to the cacti you know, GitHub page and see like, oh, look at, this is the, the badges they've achieved already. Um, you know, there's still these other things that they need to achieve and, um, you know, just, uh, just a place for somebody who is interested in a particular project versus interested in the entire foundation and, and the, the progress there. So the, uh, every project, uh, by the way, right now already displays badges uh, for its um, uh, for its feature testing, right? I mean, it uh, it has you can call out a bunch of uh, GitHub action results, and you can see whether or not they are passing or failing. So, can we tag these badges onto that, or do you think that'll be too confusing? We need to have a separate. I think if we can make use of. Uh a GitHub uh, functionality in any way, shape, or form, then we should definitely go ahead and do that. Okay, then the, having GitHub action for this, I think, sounds suitable. Thanks. Uh, Bobby? My only, but getting back to the question about how to organize these dashboards, um, I initially had um, thought it would just be as soon as someone applied for a lab, because you're kind of giving them a resource by letting them set up a, a repository. Um, and then that would be the trigger, but then you're right, you're going to have like 64 or some odd dashboards. Um, so yeah. another way to organize it would be by maintainer, whoever sets up that repository would own that dashboard that everybody could see, but it would be theirs to admin. Um, and then the only other way would, would be once it's in, gets out of labs into incubation, that's when it gets a dashboard, but then you're like leaving those lab projects behind. But the one that makes the most sense is, I guess, once it becomes a project tool or library in incubation, it would get a dashboard. Thanks. Yeah, uh, th that actually brings me to uh, something I made note of here. I think uh, if you compare uh, our Hyperledger project lifecycle to the uh, Linux Foundation networking project lifecycle, this one has, uh, it seems to incorporate uh, a lab project within its life cycle, whereas ours does not at this point. I think our, uh, this, uh, the proposal stage here refers to uh, a project being proposed as a full project and not a, not a lab project. Whereas if you look here, there's a, a sandbox stage for a project. And I think that kind of refers to is the equivalent of our lab project. And uh, because it's, it's considered to be a, a project that is not quite ready for uh, to, to even be a full project because that would be the incubation stage. But uh, so therefore they call it as a sandbox project. Uh, a question for, for the TOC is, do you think we should uh, augment our life cycle diagram to include a, a sandbox? I mean, that would, um, Partly address Bobby's uh, uh, query. I mean, it doesn't uh, address the question of like how many the dash uh, the dashboard blowups that you have. But at least uh, if you want to incorporate uh, the Hyperledger Labs project uh, within, uh, we want to capture a Hyperledger Labs project as uh, a Hyperledger pro uh, as a Hyperledger project or as something that has the potential to be a Hyperledger project. Then should we have a uh, another stage here and just have the lab project be at that, uh, let's say a sandbox stage or a lab stage before it goes to incubation. Because right now labs just aren't covered in this. If I might, I think it would be <laughs> interesting to formally extend uh, the project life cycle for Hyperledger to include something about the labs, but that's not a fully formed thought. So. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Peter, I think Peter, you were the first. So. 
I can't see the hurdle, but uh, it's all good. I yeah, I was just going to kind of reiterate what Rai was saying, which is that this might be a good idea, but I have not been thinking about it in the context of the patching. I would say maybe that's a, another decision that we should consider separately, take our time to figure it out, because depending on how we do that, it might have an impact on the labs, or maybe not. Yeah, it's highly dependent on what does that imply if we, if we, if we change the life cycles to include the labs, then my big question there is, what does that mean exactly apart from just it being documented on a chart? Does that trigger any other changes that now we have to push onto the labs or, or not? Well, one thing it can it will uh, it will do, and I think I made a note of that somewhere, is it will articulate uh, clear criteria for review of a lab project to determine whether or not meets the uh, meets the criteria to be a, an incubated uh, a full project in incubation. So just have it because uh, uh, I I believe that uh, when a project is approved for a lab, there is uh, at least a tentative expectation that it will eventually try to make a pitch for a full project, right? Because we, we don't necessarily expect that uh, last project should just be a lab project and then die, right? So um, that was my thought and I am hoping others uh, who have been longer on the TSC, uh, who have served longer on the TSC can answer the question. Uh, I can't see the order in which people raise their hands. I see Arun here. I think Tracy raised her hand earlier. Can, can you please... Uh, Speak in order. The order is uh, as it goes um, on the hands raised, so it should be Tracy. Okay, thanks, Tracy. Okay, uh, so my my thought about labs being part of the life cycle. Um, my initial thought was yes, and then I started thinking about the process. Uh, that we have for labs versus the process that we have for becoming incubated. Um, there are two different proposal processes for labs versus incubation. The labs proposal is obviously much simpler uh, from the perspective of it may be fresh new code that's being started, hasn't been, there's nothing that's happened yet, the, the, the formation of an open uh, open source practices haven't happened in the community. Um, this might be the first time that they're doing open source. So um, we, we tried to make labs extremely easy entry. Um, so removing as many barriers as possible from the proposal and, uh, and what needs to be done. So, uh, you know, like, I think it's okay if we do include labs in kind of the overall description of a kind of the life cycle aspect and what's required to be it, be in it. But I think there are two separate proposal processes um, that we should maintain because of that easy entry um, aspect that we tried to create with labs. Uh, so just a uh, just question on this. So if the, <clears throat> I mean, once if the if the lab project, I mean, if the project has been approved as a lab and then it continues to to mature, and maybe gathers more uh, maintainers, uh, improves in quality. Uh, could we not then uh, have a, uh, have it accumulate these uh, tokens or or, or badges, uh, which would then allow it to be automatically, uh, not necessarily automatically, but allow it to be uh, easily uh, reviewable in order to judge whether it can be moved to uh, an incubation stage um, rather than have it ha submit a fresh proposal, which I imagine will largely be the same as the original proposal, right? I mean, the, the goal of the project is likely to be the same un unless it's maybe merging with a different project like we were, like we did with Beaver with Cactus. Um, because uh, the what you just articulated for a uh, 
for lab project sounds very similar to what the uh, LF uh, networking uh, page has articulated for a sandbox uh, stage. So just, just wondering. Yeah, I, I would say that they're probably fairly similar as far as uh, sandbox versus labs, uh, this general same idea. Um, I, I do think that um, I probably can't answer the question yet about whether or not there would be enough to allow it to easily be reviewed to move to incubation. I, I think we should definitely take a look at what is required for incubation. Um, we obviously have those pieces of information. Um, I think I think if we do a good job with this task force, then the answer would be yes, Rama. Um, but I, I do think that it's going to require us to be very specific. And I sometimes we're a little fuzzy about what it means for these different stages. And so if we can be more specific about what is required um, in order to reach a particular stage, then the answer is probably going to be yes. Makes sense. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, who was next? Was it I you, think Arun? that's me, Rama. Oh, oh no. Oh, Hi. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's important to remember what how labs came about. And by the way, for the record, there's no lab project. That's not a concept that exists. We have lab. projects yeah. and labs. And Sorry. there is a reason okay. for this, which is the point of me speaking up now, is I think we must not lose sight of the whole premise of the labs was, you know, projects involve management resources allocation there's a cost associating with every projects and we wanted to create a space with very low cost that we could allow anybody to pretty much try something out and uh, and and so once we start integrating labs into project life cycle i think we're starting to blurry that boundary and i don't know where we draw the line anymore uh, i am a bit worried about this but you know just by, I just want you to keep that in mind. Point taken, Arun. Thanks. Uh, Arun, did you still want to say something? No, I think oh, Tracy and yeah. Arnaud covered. Um, I wanted to bring up the same point that Arnaud just brought up. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I think uh, the discussions covered a lot of the points that I mentioned here. Yeah, I think quickly. So, uh, just a, a question about uh, the end of life stage. Um, so, the this diagram has uh, it doesn't say end of life. It says archived, which means that a project that's currently been archived can potentially be a candidate for uh, a project again if uh, it acquires uh, maybe. Uh, another set of committed maintainers later. I am assuming that uh, a hyperledger project at its end of life can do the same, right? Uh, do you want to explicitly call that out, like have an arrow from end of life back to proposal, or do, do folks think that's not necessary? Uh, Okay. Not hearing anything, so I'm guessing it's not. Uh, uh, I mean, if you have an okay, Peter, you have an opinion. I was just going to say that I'm thinking. It's uh, I don't have an immediate opinion. Really. Okay. Sorry. Okay, no problem. I mean, if you have anything, then uh, please make a comment on the page. Hart. Yeah. Hey, I don't think it's you know, I don't think necessarily any arrow should be ruled out, right? I'm fine with, you know, um, moving projects around in unorthodox ways, if it makes sense. Sure, yep, that makes sense. Okay, let's let's keep thinking about this and uh, uh, any observation, if you have any observations on the diagram, especially compare these two, so just looking at this, this seems a cleaner diagram than this. Um, of course, it uh, doesn't necessarily mean we have to have such a diagram, but uh, if we, uh, uh, if having a 
a back arrow makes makes sense if it accurately reflects uh, uh, what a project can go through in the longer term, then maybe we should consider it. Um, so uh, on badges, uh, so just on the term badges, I mean, we of course have, uh, can adopt uh, whatever meaning we want, but uh, just to be clear, the Linux Foundation Networking Group specifies uh, a list of badges for uh, people, actually, for maintainers and not for the project. So we have to make a distinction. I think the, uh, this particular task force, we, when you're talking about badges, we, we are referring to um, some sort of credential that is owned by the project. Whereas in, in the LFN, they are talking about a credential issued to uh, a given maintainer. So, um, Okay, I think we've covered this part. The LFN lifecycle accommodates lab to consider the uh, Hyperledger lab to be the equivalent of sandbox. Um, and let me see. Okay, I think uh, the, yeah, I think uh, there's, there, there's a notion in the LFN lifecycle of a, uh, of a reversal, of project reversal, going back from uh, one stage to another. And I think we, in this, uh, we can kind of incorporate that here as well. I have to uh, go back and look at uh, the full list of review criteria. So sorry, it's uh, it's been a while since I made note of this, but I think there are there are some ideas from there that we could incorporate here. Uh, from from the uh, the uh, criteria for whether a project should be downgraded rather than upgraded. Like here, if you see, there's a an arrow from graduate to incubation. Uh, here we don't have that. We instead we go from graduate to dormant and then from dormant to incubation. I suppose that kind of covers this. But uh, the, the arrow here. But um, yeah, we we should uh, probably discuss uh, discuss that. Uh, aspect as well, uh, whether that is, uh, I mean, in, in the elephant uh, life cycle, they have for each cycle, they have uh, a forward, uh, a forward review criteria and a reverse review criteria. That is, what is the criteria that the reviewers will use to judge whether or not a project is ready to move to the next stage? And uh, also in a review, uh, what criteria will the reviewers, that is the uh, what's called the TAC in, in LFN, will use to judge whether or not a project should be downgraded uh, to its previous stage. Um, so that's there. Okay, let me just go through the this tentative discussion uh, points or recommendation points. Of course, we want to be refining these a lot more. And uh, based on, I'll go through the recording of this call and uh, note all of the points that have been made today. Uh, let me see what else I have here that we should be discussing now. Uh, yeah, if we do, I think maybe just uh, inquire about this uh, once again. Uh, if we do use badges, is self certification a good idea? Okay, Arun, you had a question. Um, right, that was for the previous topic, but that's fine. Um, okay, no? I, think I do have a comment on this line as well. I'll, I'll just go with this for now. Um, so over here, um, the way I see that is, so when projects do a self-declaration, they are declaring it in their reports. And then uh, the report needs to be uh, reviewed and approved by the TOC, right? Or at least let's not call it approved, but for now reviewed by the TOC and TOC will bring up further concerns and questions to the project team. And um, post that, we could go back to the uh, project and tell them their self-declaration may not be as intended, if at all uh, such case arises. And do we do this, uh, is this going to be aligned with the quarterly reports? Like we allow uh, such self-certification to be made only during quarterly report or do we allow it at any point in time? I'm just uh, concerned about the overhead if it is any point in time because uh, could happen like every week, every other week, for example. The, the biggest concern that I see um, is in terms of respond. I mean, of course, every aspect is important, but from a security standpoint, if there has been an issue raised to the project team, 
and the project team has not been in responsive to them. Um, for our recent discussions related to the security ways of working, I think we discussed that uh, we'll give time of up to 90 days for project teams to respond back. And uh, that 90 days hopefully covers the quarters that we uh, spoke about, right? So I'm okay to have it during the quarterly review cycles. And of course, other points are also important related to uh, contributors' experience and the PRs, the, the uh, time that is taken for a new contributor's uh, PR to be merged, the kind of advice the project team gives them. But those things can wait uh, for the quarterly reports. We don't necessarily need to ask project teams to keep updating their badges every time. Right. Uh, I I, uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, you're right. We don't, they don't have to update their badges every time uh, during quarterly report. But uh, I think my question was, uh, do they only get to update their badges during quarterly report or, or can they do it in between? Uh, my personal opinion, oh, sorry. I see Peter is the hand. Please go ahead. I can just uh, chime in after. Okay, so my personal view, I think we are okay to start off with a process um, that is to include this in the quarterly report. And if we see a need to change it later, we could accommodate those changes. Uh, that way we are not adding extra processes to the project team. Plus we are trying to bring in best practices at the same time. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Uh, makes sense. Uh, sorry, Peter, just before uh, I hand off to you, quick question to Arun. So the you mentioned the security uh, review, right? Um, if that, that that review process uh, we can adopt for every kind of badge, right? Not just for security. I mean, uh, we could security itself could be a badge that uh, or the fact that a project is secure, or we could have potentially multiple security levels as well, or security compliance levels. But the same process uh, that of uh, a project self certifying itself as being uh, at a particular security compliance level and therefore ready to get the badge, and also uh, that, the, that the TOC has been observing that it's the project is not being compliant and therefore it is going to, uh, it might revoke that badge after the 90 day period. I think the sort of process can potentially be applied to all any of the criteria, right? I agree. Um, just a note related to the security, we cannot certify a project as completely secure. However, we can certify a project that they have the best practices right. followed and they have been following the practice. We can certify on that aspect, but not on the security aspect. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Peter? I was just going to say that for me personally, it wouldn't be a big burden if we allowed people to just queue up a badge evaluation on the TOC agenda at any meeting where we have the bandwidth to actually discuss it. But I don't know how much of a burden would this to be to others, for example, who are managing the agenda like Tracy and Arun. But for me personally, if if you're sitting here once a week and the project uh, just uh, decided that they should apply for it, or they should have a specific badge, and they need our approval, then I would be happy to discuss it regardless of whether it's a regular TOC meeting or one with a quarterly report. Right, uh, I'm just concerned about the level of scrutiny that would require. I think uh, uh, our weekly reviews of uh, the quarterly reports, they're not particularly onerous. I mean, we. Uh, but uh, when it comes to badging, we may have to do uh, a deeper inspection of uh, code repos, right? So I think that would require a bit more work. Yeah, that's fair. So I guess so this, this decision should lie with those who will have to do more work, <laughs> which is not me. Sure. So. Thanks, Peter. Aaron? 
Right. Um, so Rama, regarding the uh, extra work or deeper analysis on into these reports, now uh, I know previously uh, when we were going through uh, the the, the uh, best practices to be adopted, we came across this word TAC uh, in other um, um, groups, right under LF, and I yeah. saw the word TAC that you also mentioned earlier. So. Um, can we can we have a TAC uh, process adopted under Hyperledger as well? And I see multiple benefits of it. And of course, it's not, um, I mean, we can further discuss what that means and how the TAC gets selected and whatnot. But I see multiple benefits. One, we will bring in additional people who are outside the TOC as well to um, help assist in anything that is needed. And then um, probably it creates greater collaboration across projects. If at all, we tell the projects that they can be their own their own TEC as well. Um, so this allows project teams to get involved more with the TOC and pitch and probably come back with the report and whatnot. So uh, just a thought. Sure. That makes sense. I mean, I was just highlighting what uh... I noted from the LFN wiki, which is that uh, in, uh, the Linux Foundation Networking has both a TSC stand for Technical Advisory Council and a board. And uh, each review is first connected by the TAC, which then makes a recommendation to the board. So, so yeah, um, the TAC would have to be a different body. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive from the board, I think, but uh, it, it probably has somebody who uh, has different responsibilities than the board. Tracy? Yeah, so I'm I'm not sure specifically about LFN, um, but TAC is typically another name for TOC or as we used to be the TSC, right? Basically the same thing that this, this group is currently doing, um, the Hyperledger TOC. Uh, so I know like in the Open Wallet Foundation, instead of a TOC or a TSC, we have a TAC, it's a Technical Advisory Council, um, basically serves the same role right of approving mm -hmm. projects and um guiding the technical community and, and that sort of thing so we need to make sure that as we look at these names um from other organizations we understand exactly what these bodies do um so that we're not like adding something that already exists within the hyperledger foundation just because it looks like it's a different name even though it's the same function makes sense thanks please Okay, I think I've, uh, yeah, I think we've kind of covered everything I had I noted here. Uh, I have, uh, I just want, I had some questions about logistics, but before that, anybody else have any um, other thoughts, uh, any other points uh, they'd like to raise about this topic that occurs to you? Or, you know, you can always make comments on this page, but uh, yeah, if you want to speak, uh, go ahead. Okay, I guess not. Or maybe let me just take a quick look at the chat. What's this? Okay. Uh, so uh, logistically, uh, uh, like the other task forces, I think uh, have a um, regular meeting schedule to discuss uh, these topics. Uh, I think it'd be good to have uh, something similar for this task force as well until we get to a stage where we can finalize the recommendations and then present it to the TOC. Um, how do I go about scheduling those meetings? I think, uh, Rai, would, would you do that? Or is this something I can do myself? Rai? Yeah, if Rai fell off the call or, or is okay. not able to unmute, yeah, just, absolutely. We can help you with that. If you want to reach out to us on Discord or email, that's fine. Okay, thanks. 
So uh, who, okay, who else? I think uh, when I look at the task force, I think at this point, the only two people are listed here, that's me and Bobby. Uh, and Bobby, I will uh, try to join the documentation uh, group meetings as much as possible. Um, that's great, thanks. Uh, for our meetings, for, for the meetings of this task force, who else would like to volunteer to review the material and make recommendations? Tracy? Yeah, I would like to Thank be you. involved if possible. Okay, who else? Um, uh, Peter, Tracy, Arun? Okay. All right, Peter, Tracy, and Arun. Thank you so much. So oh, uh, I- I apologize. Sorry. You yeah. were asking a question. I, I couldn't get to the meeting. What were you asking of me? Oh, I just wanted to figure out how to uh, schedule like regular group meetings for uh, this task force, just like we have with other task forces. Okay, reach out to me on uh, Discord. I'll show you how to do it. Sure. And uh, I think uh, uh, once every two weeks, I think should be should be good for now. All right. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on that? Otherwise, I think that's how that's the frequency with which I'll schedule it for now. Okay, so once every two weeks. Uh, thanks, Ray. I'll reach out to you on Discord. Yeah, I have nothing else, so I guess we can close today. All right, thanks, Rama. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, everybody else. And uh, okay, so before we break, uh, Arun, what are you seeing? So, uh, morning. I was just trying to understand when would those meetings be scheduled. Uh, so the mornings are tight. So Mondays and Fridays work best for me. Morning. Uh, US time, right? Right. Yeah, I think Monday, um, I think Monday there are already a few meetings, right? I think there's a documentation meeting on Monday, the onboarding meeting as well. Uh, maybe we should do this on Friday. I'll, okay, Let, since I hear no objections, Let's go with Friday for now. If anybody has any objections, please uh, let me know. And and Rama, I was thinking okay. we should set up a, a chat in Discord as well for the group. Um, so I'll yes. I'll get a chat created for the a channel created for the task force so that we can make sure if there's anything in between times that we want to discuss, we can do that. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, yeah, look forward to continuing the discussion. All right. Thank you.